Hello my soccer universe! If you're a fan of the Sweden national team you may not like this video because yeah Austria went to Sweden and won it and it's close to qualifying whereas it really looks really really dour for Sweden but I'm not gonna gloat on that we'll talk about that game a little bit later but needless to say I'm very happy and then on top of it my other favorite national team Italy also won also yeah not looking that bad but you know so Overall, I'm quite happy with what happened on match day six. Things are pointing kind of in the right direction. I also want to point out, not that I'm ha happy about it, but Germany won a game. 2-1 against France in a friendly. Never put any m importance to friendlies, to be honest. But, you know, it's a sign of life. The German national pride has been slightly restored. We still have the question. And then another friendly. And I think this is more for the history buffs. Because, you know, it's a friendly, I don't really care, but Scotland met England for the 150th anniversary of their first, the first ever uh, encounter, England winning 3-1. I think what I'm most excited about is A, the great Scotland jersey, and also the pre-match top that England was wearing there. I mean, I didn't see much, I didn't see any highlights, but I saw the pre-match top, which is, goes right back to that time. The crest looks a little bit funky, but I think it's really cool that they went uh, like that. I actually would have loved if they all both would have worn retro jerseys. Maybe they did. As I said, I have not seen anything. We also have to talk also about another big winner of this qualifying round, which is Albania uh, beating Poland. And Poland is another team that is in serious, serious uh, trouble. So yeah, uh, and that goal, well, there are also quite a few nice goals in there. And then, of course, the big wins by Belgium. Kind of expected. Spain over Cyprus. Yes, yeah, Spain is a team that goes right out. They had an international break scoring 13 goals, only conceding one. And of course, that's just a little matter of Portugal beating Luxembourg 9-0. For me, this is the most impressive one. Because that Luxembourg team was eyeing going to the Euros. And maybe he's still eyeing to the Euros because this group is really, really weak. They may, might actually finish second. <laughs> Portugal just ran riot on them. And scoring some really nice goals, which usually in beatdowns does not happen. It's more tapping or whatever. But there were some really nice goals in there. So yeah, uh, watch out for Port Portugal. They actually might find their footing... And I think it was not a coincidence. Yes, he was uh, banned because of a yellow card, but Cristiano was not playing and suddenly Portugal come, comes alive. Might be sad to say, but I honestly think Cristiano's time has come. He has to leave the national team, honestly. But let's go through the matches. Uh, I think the first one that I've pointed out here is Denmark's win at Finland, which... I was a little bit disappointed by the Finns, who were more or less hanging in there, and Denmark came knocking, 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 grinding it down. 86th minute, a Hoiberg goal gets them uh, the win in the same group. Uh, also, uh, Kazakhstan stays in the running with a 1-0 home win over Northern Ireland, also boosting their chances. And don't forget about Slovenia. Slovenia 4-0 at San Marino. This is a really, really tight group. I think Denmark will make it, but the other spot is between Kazakhstan, Finland and Slovenia. And Kazakhstan have a serious home field advantage, but they have to also show it uh, away from home. Uh, as, as I said, probably the biggest win on that evening was Albania's 2-0 over Poland. The Poland team that had an early goal disallowed uh, for then it was offside if 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 look 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 at it but uh albania fought themselves into the game and got an absolutely crazy goal from the corner of the box in through asani that's one you hit only once in a lifetime and that set albania on on the way because this was a game that poland desperately needed to get something out of if not win it and then daku in the 60 second makes it 2-0 and there was only one winner and as i said that group might not be that strong, but Poland is in real serious trouble. Uh, the Czechs even got a boost out of that uh, from uh, just that result alone. Um, we also had, and that was the game that I was watching, Ireland, Ireland against the Netherlands. You know, I like the atmospheric things. And it really looked like the Dutch were there for the taking in the first half. And they gave up an early pan pan penalty that was then converted by Ida. But then uh, Dumfries runs through, he's taken down in the box, Kakpo equalizes in the 19th. But the Dutch did not look good and the island came knocking. And if they scored, it might go differently. But Kuman made one thing, 
he completely changed at halftime. He brought on Weghorst, a little bit more attacking, and Reinders from Milan, who has been sensational at Milan. He is, has probably been the underrated player uh, of the season so far. And suddenly changes. Suddenly uh, the Dutch had mild control, control, control. Both the game and another Dumfries assist sees Weghorst heading it in for the winner. Could have been more than because there was not much coming from Ireland as well. Uh, there. Um, what other games do we have? The Greece won in that in, in that group. Then Serbia got uh, back, bounced back from the loss uh, to Hungary, three one away from home. And in the same group, we had probably the craziest game of the entire round, which was Montenegro's two one win over Bulgaria. That was a game. Montenegro had the lead. Penalty given for Bulgaria. In addition, red card for Montenegro. Uh, Despotov steps up. However, the penalty is saved. Bulgaria, though, bounce back and do get the equalizer. And it looks like they might actually get, get, get the win. And, you know, you should know by now that I have a very soft spot for Bulgaria to to my wife from, from being there. They get the, uh, the um, uh, equal and the Monikov and are pressing forward and with a man down. Montenegro gets the winner in stoppage time through Stefan Jovetic. Uh, so uh, that was a really, really not not game, a very unexpected win. Uh, on Monday evening, honestly, nothing really that exciting happened. Croatia get a win, uh, early, early goal, yes, Armenia had chances, but it was more or less cruise control. Bosnia, I think, had more chances in that game than Iceland. However, Iceland wins it in stoppage time. Uh, it's a damning loss for Bosnia, who looked in that group that they might be the second team to qualify, but now they are level on points with Iceland at six. Meaning that Luxembourg, despite being completely trounced by Portugal, are still in this, uh, very much in the running for the second spot, only three points behind Slovakia, who actually beat Liechtenstein with three early goals very, very easily. Also a big win for Wales uh, away from home to Latvia, putting pressure on Turkey there. So uh, quite some interesting re, re results, but it was all favorite wins overall. And then we had yesterday, uh, let's start with the big one in the big stadium, San Siro, Italy against Ukraine. I wanted to watch it, it just seemingly did not really work. I had, I had Austria, Sweden, and uh, Sweden, Austria, and I had Italy, uh, Ukraine on. I cannot have two screams on the same device, same, same, seemingly bandwidth or whatever. It didn't work, it was kind of done. Then I said, okay, let's watch Austria. Uh, at that point, Italy had already won the lead through Fratesi. And Fratesi scored the second one that seemingly was offside, but then in the end was not. And it seemed that Italy is in real cruise control. They were do dominating Ukraine there. And then they do what they already did in North Macedonia. We have the lead, we're gonna cruise it now. You cannot do this anymore. You let Ukraine back and uh, whatever DeMarco was doing there, uh, uh, <laughs> assisting Yao Yamalenko to the 2-1 is just crazy. I also have to say as much I love it Italy with Milan having so little Italian players. And this is something that I put more on Milan than anything else. I get a little bit, there's too much Inter influence in this squad, uh, you know. That's the one thing I have a little bit hard time with. Of course, Dollaruma was duly booed, as you would expect. Don't play this at San Siro any, 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 anymore if that trader is going there. I guess more money for Dollaruma uh, in a way. But yeah, second half, uh, Spalletti made the right conclusions and uh, Italy continued attacking. It was actually a surprise that they didn't score another one. They probably should have scored one or two more. Uh, but in the end, it's a deserved 2 1 win. For Italy in the same group, North Macedonia gets a 2 0 over Malta. But you know, uh, that puts Italy now in a really good path for qualifying. Uh, if we look further, I want to go to Group A, where the two stars, uh, Holland and Oedegaard, scored two goals for Norway. It seemed like they're gonna completely roll over Georgia. Uh, Kvartskalia missing egg, actually, quite, quite, quite a good chance, but then very late on, they pull one back. And then suddenly it gets nervous, 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 and they could have probably gotten an equalist, but Norway hang on, stay in the running for a third spot. Uh, at the same time, Spain 
Doing with Pentas, scoring six against Cy 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 Cyprus, and it's an easy win right there. Um, before we go to Sweden against Austria, because I want to finish with that one, we also had no real uh, big result in Group I. We had Israel winning 1 0 over Belarus, was expected, we had Romania winning 2 0 uh, over Kosovo, and Switzerland 3 0 over Andorra. So this keeps them all, it will still be Swiss, Switzerland number one and between Israel and Romania for the second spot. Then with Belgium beating up on Estonia 5-0 expectedly and so it came down Sweden Austria. This was the last gasp uh, game for Sweden because uh, if, even a point will already point very much towards Austria qualifying. And the first half was consequently uh, very much a Swedish affair where Austria, um, they tried to not even have a controlled um, build up play because they put Xau Schlager and Seibold in there, who are just ball winning machines. Uh, but it quite didn't work uh, whenever they went forward. Yes, they had a few chances, but it was more like that Gregoric and Anatovic uh, were a little bit in their own way. And in defense, uh, Sweden kind of uh, got Austria sometimes on the back foot and actually had the better chances in the first half. And it would not have been undeserved if Sweden would have had a 1 0 lead. Oh, in the second half, a quick change. You put Gregoric a little bit for, for the back, and which is sole uh, man up front. And then within three minutes, you score twice. Uh, once a throw in is badly defended by Sweden. Posh makes a cross. Gregoric heads it in. It's 1 0. Uh, at a point where Austria was actually pressing, uh, but given the entirety of that game up until that, that point, I was a little bit against the run of play. And then another cro uh, cro cross in that is. Uh, defended out uh, away from Arnaut Dotovic and you can see he's almost giving up but Sabitza gets the ball and immediately plays it to Arnautovic who yanks it through the legs of Olsen to make it 2-0 and that was the game already there and then um, Swedish match plan completely throw you could throw th th throw away it's even further than Vene makes a run is brought down in the box and Arnautovic doesn't really hit it well again between the legs of the goalkeeper 3-0 and that's the game Austria uh, more or less qual qualified with that one and the last uh, goal by Holm in the 9 didn't really count for much anymore although Sweden tried but there was not, not, not really much coming what I don't like is that um, you know for Euro 2016 Austria also beat Sweden 4-1 away from home um, and this was kind of this result was compared to that one the difference was this was a result that was yes Austria had a plan and actually to kind of uh, they knew how Sweden will come but Sweden actually had them on the ropes, whereas in 2016 Austria completely dominated the game from beginning to the end. So yeah, I am happy. I am happy. Uh, Austria, to be honest, in this group is probably overperforming a little bit. Uh, I think the results were always, if it needed to be, it was always falling that, that way. But I like the go forward going style and the intense style they're playing under Ralf Rangnick. And needless to say, the Austrian uh, national team is very much liked at this point. And that's why Rangnick is not going to the German na national team. At least I hope he already excluded that one. Let's look at the standings. Uh, Scotland and Spain now really look set to uh, qualify from that group. Norway, yes, they got the win, but uh, it's a steep, 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 steep climb. Even Georgia um, will not get in there as well. Group B also now very much pointing the Dutch way. Uh, I think Greece would need to beat the Netherlands at home to get a chance uh, in there. I think I, I can see potentially that happening. Ireland, I think, is out of that one. Uh, same thing can, can be said in Italy. I think is not also in control. Yes, they have a game last. Yes, they're leveling with Ukraine and North Macedonia. But I think this is pointing very much towards Italy already, who after the hiccup in North Macedonia, now look a little bit better already then if we go further to the next group the croatia turkey uh, group there's also wales in there um i think w turkey is not very convincing at at, at the moment so there something could happen there um we have then the albania czech republic i think uh, it will be those two now qualifying poland is in real trouble you see even that uh they have another high chance to even go through the uh through a qual qual qualifying through the playoffs they will make it to the playoffs but it's a tough route. Same thing for Sweden, who have no chance of even making the playoffs uh, at this point. So Sweden is already uh, more or less out. Belgium and Austria will qualify. Each of them just need a win or a Sweden uh, or Sweden dropping points. 
and it's done of, of Sweden losing. So uh, looking good for these two nations. Hungary and Serbia will make it from their group. I think there is no question about it. I don't think a Montenegro will hang in. And uh, I already said the Slovenia, Denmark, Finland, Kazakhstan. That's a really, really open group. Yes, it looks that Denmark are the favorites and their strongest team in there. But the other ones, Slovenia, Finland, Kazakhstan, I think for Kazakhstan, the problem is that they probably have to play a lot of away games from now on. And then Switzerland and Romania look the ones, but Israel has a home game against Romania, so that could play a big point. And another really open group, except for top spot, is the last one. Portugal having enjoying a big lead, perfect record like France, and now with the goals to show as well, it's the best record in qualifying. Slovakia look, looking strong with Luxembourg, at least having a playoff spot uh, potentially secure, but so does Bosnia have to go, and they have also one secured. So, um, but it very much looks like the Slovakia is gonna do that you see a little bit of players but i don't want to mention much on that uh winners and losers of match day six uh you see albania austria slovakia italy and other teams here uh of course sweden and poland are the big losers and finland probably should have gotten something out of the denmark game as well if they would have got, got, got a draw it would have looked much better uh for them but so denmark just snuck ahead of them and then there, there are a few more as well Let's look at the upcoming uh, next match day, uh, which is now at the uh, mid-October point. Uh, we have Albania, Czech Republic, I think it's an interesting, Croatia, Turkey. Um, that is a game that uh, Wales will watch with loads of interest because if Croatia win that one, then they actually have a chance of catching them. Remember, Wales got a point in Croatia. Uh, and then we also have the little matter of Spain against Scotland, although this is more or less for first place, but I think Spain will want to get revenge. Israel, Switzerland might be interesting too. Then uh, we have two, arguably three big, not two big, big, big name games with uh, Austria against Belgium for first place and Netherlands against France also kind of for first place. But since both nations will probably qualify, not, not much running. I think Ireland against Greece might be the more interesting one. Also, Portugal, Slovakia is 1v2 if Slovakia can get something over there, but I don't really see it as well. And then uh, on the last slide, not a uh, big, big Hungary, Serbia is probably the one uh, I actually think Slovenia, Finland is the most interesting of these uh, because that is really for the qualifying spot. Ukraine, North Macedonia is one you have to stay alive, but Italy will probably beat Malta at the same time. And can Denmark get the right range in Kazakhstan? remains to be seen and finally here the current standing for the favorites france and england atop of everyone else belgium spain germany portugal i think those are the favorites that we have to look at germany just because of home field advantage any case that was it for me let, let me know what you thought about the qualifiers give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and i will talk to you soon about more national team stuff up until then bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!